Okay then gang, in this lesson, I wanna talk a little bit about context, what it is and how it helps the AI model to make decisions and how to manage it in your sessions as well. So to begin with, what is context? Well, put simply, context in respect to AI is the surrounding information around a prompt to provide the model with wider context or a wider understanding of what's going on. Think of it this way, if you were just dropped into a group conversation where everyone was naming random vegetables one after the other, you'd think they were probably strange people and not have a clue what's going on. However, if before you entered the group, someone told you they'd all be playing a game where they had to name green colored vegetables in turn, then you'd not only understand it, you'd be able to join in. That's the same kind of thing that happens with AI models to a degree. If we just type a prompt to Gemini CLI that says something like make the paragraph text bigger, then it would probably not know what paragraph we mean. Yes, it can search the code base and make a good guess at what you might mean by reasoning things out, but it wouldn't have much of an idea because we've not supplied it with added context. However, we can explicitly add context to the prompt by including the file we want the change to be made within. And that way we're removing the model's guesswork an awful lot. To do that then, to manually add files or folders as context, we can just use the at symbol followed by the path to the file. Now you can actually just start writing the file name without the path and Gemini does a fuzzy search of your code base for file names that match. And you can then just select the one that you want like this homepage component right here. And when you do that, it's gonna put that file path in your chat input. So now if we sent this prompt, Gemini is gonna to know to look only at the index component to find the paragraph text, and it's much more likely to get the changes right. Now I'm not gonna make this change right now, and instead I wanna make a different change on the create page. So right now on the create page, we've got this tags input down at the bottom where users can comma separate a bunch of tags for the new food combo. However, the UX of this sucks. And instead I would like to show a little pill for each tag that the user adds, which they can then also delete by clicking on a cross icon on that pill. So let's implement this feature now by adding a prompt along with a couple of different ways of adding context. Now, before we go on, I wanna mention that I've already created and switched to a new branch called Gemini forward slash tag input. And again, I always do this whenever I'm asking any kind of coding agent to make changes or add new features. So then, now I wanna paste in this prompt right here, which says, can you update the tags input field to show a pill of the tag below the input whenever a user adds a comma? This should also clear the input field so a user can easily add another tag. Users should be able to delete the tag by clicking on a cross icon on the tag itself. Do not allow multiple tags. Users should be allowed to add a max of five tags in total. So right now this prompt is fine, but if we sent it as it is, then Gemini would have to search our code base for a form with an input field for the tags. Now in this project, that might not be so hard because there's only a couple of pages and just a single form, but in larger projects, it might have a harder time. So we can explicitly add the page with the form in it as context by coming to the start of this prompt and using the at symbol, then looking for the create page and selecting it. And now Gemini will know to look in this file for the tags input field, and it won't need to scan the rest of the code base for it. Now, as well as manually adding this file as context, we can also implicitly add it by just opening the file in VS Code. And when we do that, we can see this one open file note added above the chat input. So that's the CLI telling us that it's using the contents of this open file as context in the session. And this only happens because we have that IDE companion extension for the Gemini CLI. Without it, this won't happen. Anyway, now we can delete the section where we manually add the files as context because it's now been implicitly added instead. Even better, we can select a section of the code within the open file and that lets Gemini know exactly which part of the file we're referencing. So I could select the final form field for the tags to provide that information if I wanted to. Again, this is only the case if you have that Gemini CLI companion extension installed. If you skip that step earlier, you can always manually add it by coming to your extensions and just searching for the Gemini CLI companion. All right then, so that's how we add files as context to this prompt and a session. But before we send this request off, I wanna show you one more thing, and that is how to add images as context as well. 
So Gemini models lean heavily into multimodality, meaning they can understand text, images, and other media as part of the same conversation. And the newer Gemini 3 model pushes that even further. What this means is that we can add images as context to a prompt and ask Gemini to use that image as a design reference. So that could be a page layout wireframe, or in this case, a picture of a pill design that I want Gemini to copy. So I've already added an image file to the root of this project called pill.png. And I'm gonna reference this file in the chat by coming here and adding on, please style the pill to look like the pill from the following image. And then I'll add the at symbol to look for that file and add the whole path into the chat. Now, before we send this, I do want to say that this image processing doesn't always work very well and the results might not be amazing. And that's more true for Gemini 2.5. If you're using the Gemini 3 model, I found it to be better at doing stuff like this. But anyway, let's hit enter now to send this off and see what happens. <laughs> All right, so it's finished that now and it says it's created the feature. However, I've noticed there's an error in the create page. So let's just have a little look. If we scroll up, we can see it's right here. Tag input dot value is equal to remaining input. So this is just a type error by the look of it. So if we hover over this, you can see the type string slash undefined is not assignable to type string. Okay, so it could possibly be undefined. So, I mean, we could manually fix this if we want to, but this is a Gemini CLI course. So I'm going to go to the Gemini panel again. I'm gonna keep this highlighted for context and I will just type in, there is a type error here and see if it can fix it. Okay, and now it's fixed that. So let's take a quick look at the code and then we'll preview it in a browser. So first of all, we have this new function called on tag inputs. And I think this is gonna run. Let's have a look down here. So we have an input event right here that runs this function. So whenever a user inputs a value into it, it runs the function. And then we look for the presence of a comma. So if they've typed a comma, it will be there, this will run. Then we use the split method on that and we grab the tag using this slice method. All right, okay, so basically, yeah, we grab the tag, we split it using the comma, we grab the tag and we add the tag, which runs this function up here, I think, add tag, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so if the maximum length is reached, then we don't add the tag. If we can still add a tag and we have one, then we push it on. It's also checking for a duplicate here. So it just returns out if the tag already exists and we have the tags up here. All right, so that all looks pretty good. We also have this remove tag function as well. Remember I said we should be able to remove them by clicking on the cross. So that removes them and that should get invoked down here. Yeah, so we output the tags using V4 and we have an X right here, an X component. I think that must be imported at the top, yeah. So we grab the X component, which is an icon, and we output that. Then when a user clicks on it, we run the remove tag function. Okay, it all looks okay at first glance. Let's try this out in a browser. All right, so moment of truth. Let's come to this tags input down here, and I'm just gonna type a tag like spice here, press a comma, and it should add that little pill. I think technically these are called chips, aren't they? Not pills, but either way, it's used our design as well that we supplied that image and it looks identical to it, which is pretty good. If we click on this cross, then it goes away, awesome. Let's try adding a few, so spicy, sweet, um, nice. What else could it be? Um, salty. Now, what I'm gonna do is try adding a duplicate. So if I try adding sweet again, it shouldn't be added, right? because we already have sweet right here. So let's try adding it. Yeah, it doesn't work. We don't allow duplicates. Let's add one more. Let's say, what else could it be? Savory, press a comment. Now, if we try to add another one, so if I just put another, then we shouldn't be allowed to do that because we said the maximum number of uh, tags was five. So let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, so it says you can only add a maximum of five tags. I mean, that's probably not the way I would handle this. I might show a little 
error down here somewhere instead of an alert box. But either way, we didn't specify that. The model wasn't to know. So we could go back, add another round of changes if we wanted to and implement that feature. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stick to this because I'm pretty happy with how everything works. Okay then, so now we know what context is and how to manually add files as context to a session. And next I wanna quickly talk about managing the context in a session when it gets too large. So when you're chatting in the CLI and asking Gemini to do multiple things, all the files you add to the chat session as context plus all of the conversation history between you and the model stays in what's known as the context window. And the longer your session goes on and the more files you add to the context and the more responses you get back and so forth, the more that context window fills up. Now, the Gemini models actually have a very large context window of 1 million tokens, which means you could be chatting to the model most of the day, asking it to work on multiple features all in the same chat session, and you still probably won't fill the context window. You might, but probably not. However, if you do fill it, then some of the older context starts to slip out of the window and the model can forget about it. And that's when the model can become less predictable, I guess, and sometimes lose its grounding. Not only that, the session can get filled with a lot of noise and irrelevant information, like features that maybe you rolled back or changed quite often. And that can sometimes dilute the important stuff and cause a little bit of confusion for the model. So typically, I don't like my sessions getting bogged down with a lot of context. And I'll normally switch to a new session whenever I wanna work on a different feature or something else. But in the rare occasions where I need or want to keep the same session and the context is filling up, then we have a command called forward slash compress that we can run to help. Now, before we do that, I wanna just enable a setting in the workspace, which shows the remaining context in the current window in the CLI down here. So to do that, we can run the settings command, and then we're gonna to tab to the bottom menu to switch to the workspace settings. Then I'm gonna key down until I find the setting called hide context window percentage. And when I reach that, I'm gonna change the value to false. So it shows. Then I'll escape out of this settings window. And now we should see the remaining context amount right here as a percentage in the footer of the CLI. Now, in my case, I've still got a lot of context space left, so there would be no real need for me to do anything right now to manage it. However, I wanna show you the command we can run if you do ever find yourself filling the window up, and that command is the compress command. So what this command does is look at the entire context in the history of the session and compresses all of that context into a smaller compact summary of what's happened in the session so far. Then it puts all that compressed summary into the context window and it removes everything else from it. So it significantly frees up space. And you can see that space remaining in my context window for this session has gone up now because we've compressed the entire session history into a small summary. There is another command too, which is the clear command, and that clears the entire context window without making a summary, so be careful about using that one. But anyway, that's pretty much everything now about context that we need to know for now. And in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Gemini CLI using an API key, and that's gonna allow us to use the newer models.